Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen Addix Anonymous State of the Game. And I'm getting closer and closer to getting over my saltiness. And I had to evaluate my saltiness over the last two weeks and try to determine what exactly is the cause of it. Am I losing heart? No. Am I losing confidence? No. Am I losing belief? No. What is it? It's just outright disappointment. It's also questioning, questioning of the method by which Star Citizen is being released in its alpha stages. And it, it comes down to this, as, as a promoter of the game, as a voice out there for the community, I, I push the game to a lot of people. I, I sell the game, I present the game to a lot of different people in my life. All right, that's understandable, right? We get a hold of something, we're excited about it, and we talk about it, we get everybody else hyped up about it, right? Star Citizen is still an alpha. 3.0 is still going to be an alpha. 3.2, 3.3, 3.4 is still going to be an alpha. 4.0 may be a beta. We don't know. But all of this saltiness came from the way that they decided to start implementing the alphas of the game as big giant releases. Now you can do that if you have a game to sell and maybe there's a lot more to 3.0 than I actually put together in my head. I know it's going to be a game but it's going to be a game without the game. We're going to have mission givers, we're going to have places to go, things to do, we're going to be able to finally group together as our our organizations with purpose. But CIG seems to have this affinity towards making everything a grand release. And that really puts a person that is a supporter, a voice, a community, a, a community, do I want to say, I, I'm, I'm somebody that the community looks for to get the truth about what's going on in the game. So when they're pushing hard, for when they're pushing hard for this fanfare, the, this grand release, I have to remember to tone down my excitement because somebody that is going to be following me is going to be looking at it like, this is a great game, this is a great game, what else is there to it? And that's the issue that I've had. And I think that's the saltiness. That's where it came from. The excitement is something different. I am excited about the game. With each day, it gets another step closer, especially 3.0. And I know that there's been a couple of delays over the last few weeks, and it's not those type of delays that w would really great on me. These type of delays that we're getting now are like bug fixes because you really don't want a bug ridden game to get in the hands of the Ivacati because then what are they really getting done, right? What are they really going to do? They're going to get in there and they're going to point out the obvious. The obvious being the different uh, bugs that the play testers have already found over at CIG. And they do have more playtesters now, and they're hiring on more and more each month or each release. And that gives another layer to the pipeline, another stage to the pipeline. They finish a feature or finish a patch. It goes to the playtesters. Playtesters find bugs. It goes back to the developers. They fix the bugs. It goes back to the playtesters. After the playtesters say, yeah, it's still a little buggy, but we could use some more eyes on it, it will go to Ivacati. And that's what I think is going to happen this weekend coming up. It's going to get to the Ivacati. Knock wood, okay? And then the Ivacati is going to find bugs and they're going to they're going to write down eloquent and mature um, bugs that they find, you know, in, a, in mature and eloquent ways. It's going to get back to the devs. The devs are going to correct it. And that's going to go on for a week, two weeks, three weeks, maybe a little bit longer, and then it's going to go to wave one. 
All right, so where does that put us? Well, I had made a statement that if they didn't have a game to show by now, you can't go into Gamescom without this being out. Because anything you show at Gamescom, anything you show, is going to be looked at like, yeah, 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 just show me what's coming out now. Last year we had two presentations of 3.0. Both of them said that they would be out before the end of the year and that this point of the year we'd be doing mining and salvaging and exploring in the universe and looking ahead. It's a year later and we still don't have 3.0. Now people are going to say, yes, but the game has grown and so much more is in it. And I'm just going to point back to statements that Chris Roberts made in the beginning. If you go back to the original Tent for the Chairman, if you go back to the original Wingman's Hangar, if you go back to the original Ben's Days and questions that I got to ask Chris and Sandy early on, a lot of the things that they are adding into the game now were always said yes, but not with the initial release further down the road. So in the beginning, the initial thoughts were to create the game and then add these pieces on as kind of like Lego bricks or modules later on. Somewhere along the line it became no we're not going to release anything like that we're just going to make everything polished and perfect and put it out when it's done. Now I do believe that I'm okay with this. I think that I've gotten past the frustration of them changing what I signed on for. And that's okay. I can live with that. Well, I have to live with that, but I can live with that because I get a better game in the end. But there's more to it than that. I gave at least $3,500 of my money with the expectation that that's the way it was going to be built. I, it has come to pass that I'm accepting it the way it is now. What about those countless numbers of people that threw money at their screens whenever they saw a shiny new object being sold by CIG. And instead of getting the game the way they wanted, which maybe there were parts of that game in the beginning that they just were like, that's great. I can get this. I could start playing this in a year. And here it is three years later, four years later, five years later, six months later, a year later, whatever it is. And they're still looking at the same piece of the game. How do they feel? Alright, probably disappointed and probably salty. So my saltiness is coming to a sprinkling of an end because I know that they are going to be moving ahead rather rapidly because they're in bug fixing time. And I could also see other check boxes being checked for the items that are coming after 3.0's release. So I know CIG is hard at work. So yes, I've been salty but I think that's coming to an end. But I'm not going to get on the soapbox and start preaching about Star Citizen anytime soon. But I have my green screen right behind me, and I've said I'm all ready to do a Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, and I get to the point where I stand in front of it and go, all right, what content do I have? All right, springiness, boingingness, cushioned landings, kiosks, but they've covered that, and they covered it well. And for me to cover it, I have to look at what they put out as a corporation, and then I got to go and use it and then do my news item. Just regurgitating what they're putting out there when they do it so eloquently themselves is not what this channel is about. Getting out there and actually touching and feeling what they talk about and giving you my impression and giving you the actual truth about those pieces is what this channel is going to be about in the future. What about the future? Well, my streaming of X-Plane has actually been going very well. Not that X-Plane is the only game that's ever going to be streamed on that channel. Last night I did do an hour and ten minutes of Star Citizen. It's that I'm getting my legs. I'm starting to get comfortable with it. There was a statement I made a few years back or a couple years back or maybe it was a year back to Commander Zeman. Z-Man. And it was that streaming is so much easier than YouTube. YouTube, you have to plan everything out. You have to shoot it. Well, after about six weeks of doing streaming, I'll tell you this. YouTube is far easier than streaming. 
And some of the things that I've learned while trying to stream X-Plane and Star Citizen is that it's not about the content you put on the screen, like the eye candy, the game that you're playing. It's about that interaction. It's about that interpersonal communication that you have with the people that are watching you. And that's why they come there. Some people come to see the game. Most people come to see the personality and hang out and talk to them. So I'm getting better at that. Which leads me to this. My Twitch channel has always been Nikki65 because it was a user channel. That's the username I picked long before I intended on streaming. And that's the username I'm stuck with long after I decided to stream at some point a while ago. And all of a sudden, I'm now a affiliate, and I can change my name. And I've been toying around with different names. I mean, the first one I thought of was Nikki's Air and Space Addicts. That would be awesome. But I think that acronym is already taken by somebody. I don't know. N-A-S-A. Who, who has that? All right. The, ne the next one I have is Batgirls Air and Space Addicts. So I don't know if you guys are going to like it or not. So I'm thinking about doing ASA, Air and Space Addicts, and then having Nikki in the center or Batgirl in the center, and that being the name of the channel henceforth. So if you head on over to twitch.tv forward slash Nikki65, I'm getting to the point where I'm about ready to put up a schedule and I'm about ready to put up a splash page and I'm about ready to redo that whole site because I'm going to make streaming a thing. All right, so now personal life items. It's been a hard two weeks, but I think I've got my return to flying for real completed. And this is what happened. About a month ago, I started doing one of those self-checks. And that self-check or self-evaluation is I've done all this stuff in my life. Do I have any regrets? And I go through life and I have no regrets on anything that I've done except for one thing. And that has to do with flying. I spent all my youth wanting to get in the air. And then I get married and for some stupid reason I move away from that pathway. And flying is so important to me, so important, such a huge piece of my essence that for me to just get up and walk away from it, to give it up, was absolutely the worst thing I could ever do. Absolutely. I've gone back to it once since I gave it up for my ex. And I actually liked it and had to give it up again because of my job. Or at least so I said. And then after I transitioned, I had some issues with trying to get things done. Just just changing your name on an FAA pilot's license and then other parts of that, like your gender, was just too hard seven years ago. Eight years ago. But a week, two weeks after I set out and said, all right, I'm going to do this. Two weeks after the people on my channel heard what my plan was, which my plan is very simple. My plan is very, very easy to understand. It's to obtain my commercial pilot's license and CFI over the next three years. CFI is Certified Flight Instructor. I want to make teaching flying a secondary income source, but I might want to do more than that down the road. But that's what I want to do. So what that meant was definitely getting my license updated and then getting a medical and then finding a flight school, then getting a biennial. So that's four steps. I've gotten three steps of those done, and it took two weeks to get one of those done. That was my medical. So when you sign up for the medical, this is the problem I have with some government agencies. There's actually three different logins for the FAA. There's a login where you sign up to have your flight test. There's a login where you can sign in and alter and change and um, get updates on your pilot's license. And then there's an, a login for the FAA by itself where you could reprint licenses and do searches for end numbers on aircraft and all sorts of things. Well, to change your name and gender on a 
license, you have to actually go down to a FAA stand, um, standards district office. It's called a FISDA. There's one in Atlanta with a couple of um, people over there that you could actually talk to. I made an appointment. It was three weeks ahead of time. I show up and bring all my documentation. That gets done. Two and a half hours to sign paperwork, but most of it was touching base with the inspector who turned out to go to the same high school that I went to, only he graduated five years earlier. So we get that done. Three, two days prior to that, I had a, a medical examination, the class three medical exam. And I only needed that because I haven't had a exam since 2006. If I had had one in 2006, I could have just gone and take a course online and my doctor could have included in my yearly physical just a piece of paperwork that I could have sent back to them that would have qualified me for that. So I get through all this and, you know, the medical and there's a mismatch of my name and my social security number. Well, that's fine. I'm going to change my name on Thursday. I'll come back on Friday. Well, the key here is government, and, and mind you, every government employee I've talked to in the last week has been outright wonderful. They have been amazing. They have been perfect. They have been balls to the wall, the best I've ever, I've ever dealt with in government offices. They've been, they've been great. But the processes, the procedures that they go through make you shake your head. So I sit down with a gentleman to change my name. He fills out the paperwork. We sign it. We seal it. He sends it out. It goes to somebody else in Oklahoma. And then six months, it's 120 days later. So what is that? Three, six, nine, twelve. Four months later, it might be updated in the database or I can get something back saying that they need something else. For the time being, I have a temporary license. All right. So back to the medical exam that happened two days before that. I legally can't put down a, my old name on the paper because it's not that I have an alias now, so I have, an, I have a legal name change. So the old name is not my name. I can't use it. I have to use my new name. Well, that puts a damper on things because my pilot certificate is associated with the old name, and it's going to take months to update, so they can't print my medical exam. Oh my God, this roundabout stuff went on until I think yesterday. It seems like it's been cleared up. It's just one of those things where the government procedures, not the people, but the procedures probably aren't well thought out when they think about how they work out in the wild. This gives extra work for everybody involved, including the FAA, which drains resources and money. Oh my God. So I got that done. And the last thing done, I, I looked at a few flight schools around the Kennesaw area for uh, Cobb McCollum, um, Cobb County International Airport. It's actually a small field, but it has a customs office on site. And I found a flight school, Superior Flight School, to get um, my biennial. And I'll probably go over to Aero Atlanta at some point over the next year to get checked out in the Cirrus SR-20. But I'm moving back into flying, and that is awesome. I'm excited about that. And I could talk about that more, and hopefully if we do uh, BASA, Batgirls Air and Space Addicts, we'll be able to talk about that in the future. Well, the last thing. We have Dragon Con coming up. That's going to be in just about five weeks, and that's going to be Labor Day weekend. David Hannock will be here. Please come to Dragon Con. Um, we'll figure out some kind of hashtag on Twitter. I want to meet each and every one of you that is going to be there because that's important to me. I want to see the faces of the people that play the game. I want to meet and shake the hands, get hugs from the people that actually are the biggest supporters of CIG. And then, of course, we have a long time to talk about this, but it's not as long as you think. VerseCon is coming up in October. So if you don't want to know what VerseCon is, just do a Google search on it. It's pretty awesome, pretty incredible. And VerseCon right now is going to be on October 27th and 28th. It's going to be in Austin, Texas. Tickets are going to be $50 for both days or $35 for one day. And you can visit the VerseCon, that's all one word, page on Facebook. Like the page and get more information out there. All right, that's all my public service announcements. I love you all. Thank you for watching. And with that said, you all be safe out there. And I will talk to you soon. Yeah, I know. It, it sounded like it just ended really quick. And that it did. Because that's all the info I got for you this week. But I will have more next week. I promise.
Bye.